Is this thing recording? Hold on, let me see. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Nice. Hopefully you can see my face because I can't see it. Guess what, guys? It's Tuesday. The sun is out and it is beautiful outside. It's about 4.30 in the afternoon right now. And guess what I'm going to do today? If you guessed work on the Cobra, you're right. That's exactly what I'm going to do today. So let's get this thing started up. I'm filming on my phone right now because I left the GoPro in my truck and when I went to go grab it, it said the battery was dead, which is a little strange to me. It's plugged in right now and it's charging, so we're going to start this off on my phone. We get the Cobra moved around over by the garage and we'll get started working on it. Well, I say we'll. I'll get started working on it. It's just going to be me because I don't think any of you guys are really going to help me, right? I didn't think so. You'll look good again one day, car, I promise. So this is the part I need to replace in the car, and hopefully that's going to stop the oil leak. But the first thing I need to do is drain all of the coolant out of the car, so I need to go get my drain pan out of the truck and get started draining the coolant. All right, so I've got my drain pan here, but I got one problem. That doesn't quite fit underneath the car very well. So I lifted the car up enough just to be able to get the drain pan underneath it so I can drain the radiator, get all the coolant out of it. Don't mind the mess under here. She's been sitting for a little while. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this cap off here. And look, yeah, it's full of coolant. I'm glad I'm changing that out though. That doesn't look like the right color to me. All right, so I got the drain plug off of it and we are slowly draining fluid out of it right now. Actually, I've got it kind of just halfway hanging in there. I wanted to start off slow because I'm afraid that as soon as I pull that plug off, it's going to go spraying out everywhere. So the coolant's all drained out of it, but I think I'm going to take this opportunity while I've got the coolant drained to pull this bottle off and clean it out real well. Hell, I might even clean the radiator out. But the radiator is pretty new. I've got an aftermarket Mishimoto three-core aluminum radiator in there. So I already knew that this was going to take more than one day. And looking at this drain plug here, you can tell I need a new O-ring and probably some new Teflon tape on there. I don't have either one of those things. So what I'm going to have to do is I'll probably have to go by the store after I get off work tomorrow, pick up an O-ring kit because I don't know what size that's going to be. They're cheap enough at Harbor Freight and uh, pick up some Teflon tape while I'm there so I can install this back in there. But for the time being, I am gonna go ahead and put it back in so I can just go ahead and lower the car back down, then raise it back up and put the jack stands underneath it and pull that oil cooler out of there. See if we can't fix the leak. All right, so I've got the car on jack stands. One thing, other thing I like to do is I always like to leave the jack underneath the car too, just in case it goes anywhere and I'm gonna put it on the side I'm gonna be working on. But just in case, for some odd reason, it doesn't like the jack stands and wants to come off the jack stands, still got the jack holding it up. All right, so I'm gonna switch you over to the GoPro now. I've got a little bit of a charge on it, it's at 78%. Uh, hey, this is a good opportunity to see what's better, my phone or the GoPro. And if my phone's any better, I'll start filming with it. So let's crawl underneath the car here. Now, look at all, look at all that lovely oil underneath there. Isn't that just gorgeous? First thing I need to try to disconnect is going to be this hose right here. You can see that clamp for it right now. It goes into the top of the oil cooler and I've got to pull that out in order to be able to get the oil cooler off. Then I'll pull this oil filter off and then hopefully I can get to the bolts and pull the oil cooler off. All right, so I'm going to start with that hose. I'm going to grab some pliers and get that off. All right, so I'm going to try to wiggle that hose clamp off it's in a really bad spot you may not be able to see any of this anyway but this thing's in the way too wish I had the proper pliers for this 
I know the sun's starting to go down. And I'm going to have to call it a night here fairly soon because of that. Oh, I miss summertime. And then when it gets to summertime, I'm going to be like, man, it's hot. I miss wintertime. It helps if I have the proper tools, and I don't have the proper tools. Here, let's post my flashlight up somewhere where I can see what's going on. Hey, that looks like a good spot, actually. Can you see it now? Oh, it may not stay there. Ford, that's a great design, Ford. Good job. And again, from their point of view, they're hoping you buy a new car before they turn 20 years old. Is this 20 years old? That car's 21 years old, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Have I ever told you I hate these kinds of hose clamps? Well, if I haven't, you know now. Dead GoPro battery before I get this off of here. Hey, why does Ford use these stupid clamps? Because they're cheap and fast to put on. And for that matter, why does every car company use these? <laughs> Okay, yeah, now we're in business. All right. Son of a gun. Nope, not blue light. What's the thing do? What happens when you buy cheap flashlights? All right, so we got the hose clamp off of there. It's dripping a little cool, it as I expected. I expect some more to drip out of here. Let me grab that drain pan and see if I can catch this coolant. 
Guys, I'm going to go ahead and call it a night on this one. It's getting dark outside anyway. I'll get back to it tomorrow morning. Well, not tomorrow morning. Tomorrow afternoon when I get off work, I'll get back to it again. Now, I watched some online videos of how to do this. And what they don't tell you is that if you have a Cobra, it's a lot more difficult. It's starting to look like I may have to pull the power steering pump off or at least away from where it sits now just to be able to get to the bolts to pull the oil cooler off. And I can't even see the bolt on the backside. Hey, train. Now with the GT, I don't even think there's this type of oil cooler in there, so maybe it is a lot easier because you're not dealing with as much bulk. You're just dealing with an oil filter adapter at that point. Kind of wish I could just go ahead and delete the whole thing and just put a regular oil cooler in there. But Good morning, guys. It is the next day, 5.06 a.m., and it's time for me to head into work. I will see you guys at 11 a.m. after I get off work. All right, so I'm finally off work. I can get started working on the Cobra. I'm gonna head home and do that, but the first place I need to stop on my way home is Harbor Freight. I've gotta pick up some an O-ring kit, like I was talking about yesterday. I'm home, swung by Harbor Freight on my way home and picked up an O-ring kit. Hopefully this is gonna have the size that I need. Also picked up some Teflon tape as well to help seal that plug back up. And then I picked up a solar panel, but this is going to be for the Lexus to help keep the battery charged since it's got a little bit of a drain somewhere. It's a small drain. Hopefully that's going to help overcome that drain and keep the battery charged. All right, so let's get back to working on the Cobra. I've got to get it back up in the air and see if I can get that uh, oil cooler off of there without removing the power steering pump. Okay, so hopefully this is going to be a good spot for the camera so you can get a good sense of what I'm doing. Now I'm going to pull that oil filter off. Now because I like to overpower things, I'm going to have to use an oil filter wrench to loosen this thing up. There we go. Alright, should be loose enough. I can get it off by hand now. Make sure you have some kind of a drain pan underneath it so you can catch the oil before it spills all over the ground. Alright, cool. Oil filter's off. Let that oil keep draining out of it until it's done. You can tell that oil's cold. It's nice and thick right now. I am slightly hesitant to pull this hose off even though it has to come off. Simply because I think it's going to pour a whole bunch of fluid out when I do it. And the problem is, is I don't want to stick my head all the way underneath here and get both arms on it. I really don't feel like getting sprayed in the face by coolant. Now, let's see if I can get the pliers around the hose here. All right, let's try to get this hose off of here. expecting that. try pulling this piece off and for that I'll need a gigantic Allen head. I think I have one. So I've got the tool I need to pull this off of here. Oh 
Oh wow, that was really easy actually. Scary easy. Well, I wish I would have had the camera rolling at the time when I got the oil cooler and the oil filter adapter off, but there we go. That's what was causing my oil leak. I kind of figured that it was this gasket probably blowing out. I could see it a little bit from up there, but not real well, but it's out of there now. So let me show you that. Let me show you what it looks like under there without the oil cooler and the oil filter adapter on it. Yeah, I made a huge unintentional mess. But yeah, there we go. Look, you can see right there. Looks like the shape of the gasket, doesn't it? Well, that's where this piece here, the oil filter adapter mounts to. And then this piece, the oil cooler mounts to that. So that was a real a real booger to get off of there, but it's off of there now so we can replace that gasket first. I need to clean up that surface a bit. And the good thing is, is looking at this, there's no pitting on it. Like I was afraid there was going to be. There's no pitting at all. So I just need to clean that up, clean that up, and then we can get the new, uh, new gasket installed on there, get it all bolted back down and get everything put back together. All right, so I had to run to the parts store real quick to pick up some brake clean and pan to clean those parts off in, because obviously I don't want to put them back in the car dirty. We want to clean all the oil and everything, make them look brand new again before I put them back in there with the new gasket. All right, so we're going to start with the oil filter adapter piece, get that thing nice and cleaned up. Well, the first thing I probably want to do is pull this rubber gasket, this rubber O-ring off. So I don't destroy it in the process. Be right back. So I'm a dummy and I forgot to press record while I was cleaning this piece off, but look at it. Looks brand new again, nearly anyway. Now we got that piece all cleaned up, we'll move on to the other piece over there. That one's about as clean as I'm gonna get it. Looks a whole lot better though. So I'm gonna set this one off to the side and we're gonna let these dry before I put it back on so we can get all the brake cleaner off of them. Cause I really don't want that in my uh, oil. All right, so I'm ready to put this piece back on with the new gasket. So I'm sorry it's a little bit dark under here. The sun is actually starting to go down a little bit. Hopefully I can get this all back on here before the sun goes down. Try to lift it up there with a couple of the bolts in to hold the gasket in place. Oh. It's not necessarily easy, like on a car. Yes, I have a lift. Okay, good. We got one bolt started. Make sure I get the gasket lined up properly. I need to get another bolt started. All right, cool. That's two bolts started. Okay, I'm running out of memory card room, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it here for a second, and then I'll start recording again when I move on to the next piece. 
Okay, so that first part, the actual oil filler, filter adapter piece is mounted and ready to go. So now I'm gonna grab the other piece and get it bolted back on as well. So this next piece might be a little bit trickier to get back on because you gotta get it seated against this really well. Let's see if I can run it up through here like this. All right, I think I've got it seated. Hope. Now, this is basically the this is basically the bolt that holds it in. That actually went a little bit smoother than I had and anticipated. So let's get this thing locked down. Make sure this is really tight. All right, that's pretty freaking tight. So now we got the oil cooler itself hooked back up. Let's see if we can get this hose back on there. Look at that. Slid right on there. Nice. Nice. I'm going to take my oil filter and put it back on. One more thing to hook back up. That's going to be the oil pressure sensor there. All right, guys. The rest of the stuff is easy to button up, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that off camera since I don't have much uh, memory space left on this thing. All right, so I've got it all wrapped up down here. Everything is put back together. All the bolts are tightened down, and so now, uh, now we're going to move up top. i got to put that belt back on. See, i got it back over the power steering pulley here, but i got to get it back over the alternator pulley and get the tensioner back on it. Hey, it's me from the future, like a month in the future, and I'm in Texas right now, sitting down editing this video on some free time that I have, and I realized that I'm like 22 minutes into the video or something like that, and it's getting a little long, so I never filmed any kind of an outro or anything like that, but this is where I'm going to stop the video. I'll continue on in a part two, which I'll get to editing after this, and then you'll see the video probably a couple of days after this one. Not sure how often I want to post videos or not. But anyway, yeah, stay tuned for part two. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and make sure that you're subscribed so you can catch part two. You'll see the notification for it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. See ya in part two. Whoop.